So let's say I'm going to call this a order. So let's see, we've got a motion to approve Mr. Holdrack's participation via Zoom. So moved. Second. Well, we need a verbal roll call. Mr. Campbell? Yeah, yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Hodges? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Ms. Harper? Present. Ms. Williams? Here. Chairman Hart. Here. Approved. Yeah. In favor. So, well, we, we just did that after I called it to order. And now do we, we've got roll call. It's next on the agenda. We have to do roll call again. Okay. Yep. Ms. Okay. Brown? Here. Mr. Hodges? Here. Mr. Holderide? Hey, Kenny. Mr. Pierce? Here. Ms. Ms. Farber? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Campbell? Yeah. Mr. Chairman Roy. Present. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Holder, I would like to add an agenda, add an item to the agenda. I've got a couple of things I'd like to like to uh, uh, propose. Um, let's see. Um, we had Kyle on the phone for four hours in the last meeting. We were waiting for him. He was just hanging around. And so what I'd like to do is propose that we move uh, Kyle and Tracy Porter up and, and have them present first. And uh, uh, so that, that would uh, reorder things. So 7A would become 7A, 7B would become 7D, 7C would become 7C, and 7D would become 7B. Uh, I'd like to add discussion uh, about how we evaluate prioritize things. And so uh, there's a couple extra sheets that were slip sheeted today that I'd, I'd just like to talk about return on investment, how, how we prioritize things. And, um, and then we've got uh, Ms. Ms. Williams uh, was gonna check on Tappahannock processing, uh, uh, processing plant there and work with staff on farmer's market and Boulder Ride was gonna uh, do some work on internet and internet uh, property search database. It's a mouthful. But if everybody followed it, I'd, I'd like the motion to uh, modify the agenda accordingly. I move to modify the agenda as stated by Mr. Rose. Second. Second. All, right. All in favor? No. Aye. All, right. All opposed? Okay. First thing we've got to do is get through the minutes, or uh, approve the minutes. And we've got April 13th minutes uh, that we need to approve. That was the last time we were here together, except with this Diaz. And uh, I don't have any modifications. I don't know whether anybody else has changes. I make a motion to accept both gentlemen. I don't. Second. 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 All in favor? All right. Motion passes. Still that thousand, Chris. Yeah, we're cooking. All right, so let's see. Um, now we've got April twenty-three that we need to go through. I did have a couple of a couple of comments on that. Um, uh, I'm glad to run through mine um, uh, first. So there was uh, we did a um, we we did. Um, uh, advantages, disadvantages from an economic development standpoint, and, and listed them as one of the exercises that Mr. Um, uh, 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 Ashcroft, uh, um, Ashcroft uh, um, uh, had us do on Saturday. And one of the things that popped up that's not consistent uh, it was un under like advantages. Uh, one of the things that was listed out was affluent residents per capita income, and that's in contravention to um, uh, the, the over-leveraged and the lack of white-collar workers and the disadvantages. And so I, um, I'd suggest the easiest thing to do is just take it out rather than have a bunch of discussion around per capita income. Um, but that's... Um, and then um, there was... Well, 
one of the pages that said that I asked if the Fort Hills Farmers Market offers franchises, and I and I know it, that I, know, I don't remember what I said, but I'm sure it wasn't franchises. And so, um, may need to look back at the tapes on that one. Let's see, were there were there any other comments? What was your first comment, Jim? So, what, if you if you look on, I can show you. If you go to Page twenty-three in the packet. Uh, oh, it it listed actually it listed strengths. Okay, okay. One of the strengths is uh, we listed out as high fluent residents per capita, high per capita income. Mm -hmm. And I was saying that's inconsistent with some of the challenges we have, which is twenty-eight percent over leverage. Uh, households and a lack of white collar workers and suggested that uh, rather than have a, a bunch of dialogue around around that particular issue, he's just taken it. It's because the figures that really weren't in, in the where those figures come from, I guess, which is well, discussed. Well, I think we learned if you go back that one of the challenges we have is, is um, all right, you just don't want to put all that around, just make a statement and leave it in that. That's what you're saying. The minutes just reflect what was said during the meeting. Right. It doesn't they, reflect they, anything. They else. do not reflect accuracy as far as whether the data is accurate, but it is information that is passed within the meeting. Okay. If, if everybody's okay, so we don't need to address that then. It's so. just that there's an inconsistency. And uh, the, the only other, the, the other comment I had was it, it, it talked about, I, I asked the question that Fork here's form, it form. If the bulk years farmers market offered franchises, and that's not. I'll go back and look at the tape because yeah. that was what I wrote. Yeah. So, but I'll go back and look at it. What page was that on? Uh, yeah, now you, you know, uh, actually, I can tell you, it's page 28. Um, so, was it, so we've made one revision. Is there, are there any other revisions? Well, no revision to it yet. We can't vote on these minutes until she goes back and checks the tape. Yeah. So these minutes will hold over until the next meeting. Okay. All right. So you're um, all right. So we'll I guess we push that to the next meeting. I was thinking that we could uh, revise it subject to the revision, but we did that last time with Gene's comment, and Gene said we corrected. Well, I just you were present. My, Brad, I had me absent. I just want to show present came in late. So right. Absent. That's that, right. Absolutely. Right. We made that revision. And, and approve the minutes. So I guess. Well, the the question is is whether or not the information is there. Yeah. So if you okay. ask, okay, okay, that's all. All okay. I'm saying is if you ask um, for the tape to be checked, got it, then. got it, got it. Good point. Okay. Um. Let's see. Uh, next on the agenda, we've got the treasurer's report. Mr. Chairman, there is no change. Uh, from the previous month, I will say that the board uh, adopted the budget uh, Monday night with the uh, funding that would cover uh, a possible extension of the contract uh, for the consultant. Okay. If the board chooses to, uh, or the EDA chooses to go in that direction. And, and we've got uh, the, that, that's on the agenda later on. That's correct. To go over uh, that piece of business. Yeah. Um, can I ask some questions, Chair? Yes. Have have we paid for the services rendered to date? Have we been billed and paid for that? The only outstanding is the last invoice for the final. Okay. Outstanding. And we'll have plenty of time to get that in before June. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Next on the agenda. Oh, um, we're done. Everybody's. Okay, so the next on the agenda is the chairman's report, and I'd like to have some discussion around ROI. I don't know whether that's whether that belongs here or whether we deal with that as a new business. I think what's some direction for me? You can put that on the chairman's report. Okay. All right. All right. So there there are three pages that were slip sheeted. And I don't know that this is the right answer. I'm just I, my goal was just to have some dialogue and uh, and and Propose something and maybe get some reactions and get it to a higher level. 
but it, the first page is, is return on investment, just a simple return on investment. And so what, I, what I'm proposing is that as we're having these dialogues, one way to quickly filter some things and, and determine whether whether there's whether, whether we you know where 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 items are in the pecking order is to look at things from a return on investment. There's two ways to do it. One is like a return on sale, and the other is a you know a recurring uh, income on, on investment. And so I, I, I offer those up. Somebody may have some better better thoughts, but that's a pretty simple thing. It's, it's easy for everybody to understand and follow. Um, um, yeah, I mean, at some point, it, I guess we get into this kind of cash flow and all those different things, but that's that's a different discussion. That's we don't need to have that filter things. So, question, Mr. Chairman, are we only going to look at tangible returns on investment for things that the EDA are looking into. Well, because so, this is a tangible, so. So at some, at some point, if we're doing real estate investing, we'll get into discounted capital analysis and we'll get it, it, it and we'll drill into things and we'll look at, yeah, we'll, I'm sure we'll have debates over whether expenses accelerate faster than income and all those sorts of things, right? Well, those so are still tangible. That's a, that's that's a that's a different discussion. So okay, those so, are still tangible. Okay. I'm looking at intangibles that may be, or something that may be a community development. We we put in an area that can be utilized for farmers markets, which don't bring any money. As an example, Jay and most of you are aware of the the investment to build a deck on um, area in West Point. What the heck's it called? The, um, the, oh, no, the pavilion. pavilion. The pavilion. pavilion. Sorry, I couldn't think of the term. The pavilion that King William EDA agreed to invest in with that. That for us is a 100% intangible return on investment that you could mark. I don't think that's true. Forgive me. Not to... Maybe not 100%, but there are more, in my opinion, right now, there are more intangibles to it than tangible that we can see. So, so I think, you know, strictly speaking, we improved the piece of land that the pavilion is on. Correct. So there was a gain in the value of the real property. And so King William, insofar as we invested funds into that project, we own a portion of the gain. So we could point to a very real tangible return on investment or the county owns a portion of that parcel. I think to your point, the goodwill generated yeah. by King Williams investment in that property um, is very difficult to put a dollar value on. We could, we could assign a value to it um, for our own financial statements if we wanted to at whatever value we would attach to that goodwill. But I don't think that, I mean, to the, to, I mean, I guess that, that investment was not ours. The EDAs, right. it was the counties. But so I do think, just strictly speaking, on the, to understand ROI in that case, you would have to look at the improved value of the property after making the investment and figure out what portion of that is attributable to King Williams' investment. And we could say that there was a two, three, four, 10, 12% ROI on that investment. Okay. And agreed with that. I guess my question is more along the lines of, will noting that yes we would these are for me tangible is much easier to look at and evaluate for an roi than the intangible but at times intangible is much greater than what the tangible may be so i guess that's what i want to make sure of is that we and I don't know how we capture that. I think it would be different for each project. Well, and that's why I think presenting it this way, where you can look at the, the, the annual return on investment from an income perspective versus you know, the, the gain of the value of a piece of property, right? So you could, we could say that if the EDA finds a way to go out and acquire a piece of property right. and put something on it, right? You, we wouldn't necessarily see any income as a result. And a lot of people would say, see, you're not, you don't have right. any ROI, but that's not true because if we acquire a piece of property and improve the piece of property, we have at least have an increase of value that's attributed to our activity. 
So there is ROI there. It's just a matter of making sure that we are able to capture, is it, is it gain of value or is it income? And looking at it in both ways, I think is really, really important. Um, and, and the goodwill discussion is real, but, but we can value that however we want to on a project by project basis. I think what this has done is, is recognize the, the, I guess, two bases for, for evaluating the um, increase in an asset. I don't know. I, I, I'm not saying this is the answer. No, no, no. So I was, you've got a better idea? No, we'll, 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 definitely please, not better. Please lay it I'm out. just asking if, because there will be times when we need to look at, because we may come up on something that we show on here and it's flat. There, there's no return on investment, but the intangible portion of it, you know, we're able to host things at that facility now. And Jay brings up a good point that you can then show increase of use in that property, which builds a value in that property. So maybe it's just a different way of looking at it. Maybe intangible is a bad term to utilize for looking at that. I just wanna make sure that we look at not just an income-based review of what the, the asset brings us if we invest in something, because there's much many more ways that we can look at something increasing in value than just simply the return on investment income wise. That's all. I can share with you how I got here. And so uh, I reflected on our last meeting. We talked about everything from Christmas tree farms to internet websites. And it, there, there, there were no bad ideas, right? But I, I, I'm, what I'm proposing is at least an initial filter through which we can look at things to make decisions. Right now, we still got Christmas trees and internet that we're talking about. We're chasing farmers markets. And, and so at some point, we need to actually prioritize things. And, and um, in my own mind, this was a simple way to get there and to refocus discussion and say, what are the benefits? And, and it may be that we end up saying, you know, branding is the most important thing and we can't put a number on it, but, but that's what we have to do I think this, if we start here, we'll get there. Okay. But that's just one idea. If you've got a better idea, bring it on. I just, all I'm, my, my sole purpose in doing this was just to initiate discussion and see if some, you know, get us talking. So you're using this as a way to prioritize our projects? Just through which, a filter through which to look at things uh -huh. as, 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 as initially. You know, so um, um, and we, we, at some point, we're going to need to like put all these things up on the board and we're going to need to say that's the one we're going after. And we've got to have some way to figure out what that priority is. And um, this, this, this is my suggestion, but I'm totally open to, I mean, I, I get smarter the more people I talk to. So. Well, the, the, the returns with the hard numbers, they are what they are. You know, we, we, there's no question about that. Yet. The intangibles sometimes can outweigh those. Absolutely. And we should always include that in our analysis, but just be separate from the hard numbers. I, I, I completely agree. All right. Okay. That's completely. But I think having, but if we start with what, are the, what is the return, then it leads to, well, there's some intangible business. That we need to look at. Right. Well, no, always not might be a, a return on anything to go to. Best thing, we, my opinion is, what is the best thing for King County and the citizens? All right, just like you were saying to the, the thing down at down West Point. But you understand, it's in the wrong way, it's not being used because it's all the main drag and nobody gets to it. And if you go to the civilian and want to go to King and Queen, you might sit there a half hour and get across the intersection. There was no thought process of doing it. So on that side, because you can't utilize it. So my point is, we need to look at stuff. Yes, it can help make county money. Great. But also, we need to look at what is the best moving on forward for the citizens. Mr. Ashcroft, I wonder if you could help us. Or you, you've been doing this longer than anybody sitting up here. Right. And and so is, is there 
How have you seen other folks uh, prioritize things? And is there, I mean, can you offer some? some well, I think, uh, I think the work session that we had that Saturday helped us to develop a little bit of a strategy as to what we need to do. But I think we need to, we need to identify how are we going to invest or talk about a return on investment. What are we going to invest in? Is it real estate? Uh, is it waiting on a project to come in and then we um, partner? Uh, maybe we, you know, we share in the investment of a, of a project that's coming into the county. That's another way that you could, you know, get a return on your investment. Um, you know, those are two that come to mind right now that I think are real. I think uh, getting getting some property and, and choosing to market it for the benefit of the, of the authority is, is certainly something that we're going to bring forward to you. We're wanting to do it tonight. We're still missing some state information and we're doing it sometimes we'll operate under the mercy of the state. But when we get a, when we get a project, in, and I'm going to, I'm going to use Nestle to, as a perfect example. I don't, know exactly how it all flowed as to who was involved or who wasn't. But the bottom line is the county invested and Nestle invested. And now you have one of the most major projects in the state. So to me, I don't know how you calculate that into your formula, but you certainly created jobs, you created a, a greater tax base than you had before, and you still have the potential for even more uh, development at that site looking forward. So to me, that is a return in your investment, you know, in the county's investment. It might not be the EPA specific, but anything good in economic development is still tied to this group as far as I'm as far as I'm concerned. Okay. So, so how do we how do how do we prioritize all the stuff we have? Do you, that's that's I, I mean uh, we, we've got well, I just, ideas. Well I I just think um, internet well websites. yeah but I'm just saying you know, you throw out a number of ideas. Um, the majority of this of the board has to decide: are those ideas worth pursuing? And it's not that they're bad ideas, but maybe they don't fit. As uh, the vice chair has said, you know, you made a trip to to Fauquier, you looked at that project. Is that something that would fit in King William? If it is, then you charge staff with doing your groundwork. Uh, a farmer's market, which is later on in the agenda. It's, it's probably going to be a, a small, to get it started, a pilot, but if that's what we want to do, then we want to run with it. A processing plan. If there's if there's a lead there, we'll help you chase it down. We weren't aware of it. We know about processing plans, but I'm not aware of anybody who wants to necessarily make an investment here. So I'm just saying, it really takes what you feel like. You have the pulse of the community. You're you're appointed because you best know what the community feels like from an economic development. So just, so just and yeah. this this is yeah. Kenny. Um, good evening, everyone. I got my mic to work, but um, I, I know I me. Mean, you're you're discussing about uh, you know, like getting a win under our belts in 2022, and you know, I, I think that, you know, maybe if, if we find projects, because I've seen some counties, I think it was Tappahannock, somebody was out actually going specifically after a certain business to bring to a county. Um, may, maybe that could be, you know, we say, hey, we want to bring a new restaurant to the county in 2022, more of something that's a franchise chain restaurant. I mean, I think that that's something potentially, I think we do have some sites that we could potentially get the ball rolling and specifically call out that we're going after that specific customer to the county. And I think Kyle, you know, when he does his thing, you know, we'll, we'll kind of know our target of what we should go after because the mathematical equations is right for that kind of business to participate in the county. Um, so I think maybe after we hear RKG's final wrap up, you know, we, I think you're a hundred, you're spot on with, you know, we need, 
to put some wins and know what to go after. I really appreciate it. For, forgive me, if, if, Mr. Chair. Um, I appreciate this as, a, as, I think, one of two critical factors in evaluating whether or not to pursue or prioritize something. So I like to, forgive me, I, I created a visual um, where I like to think of a, of a box like this, where on the, the high side, you have something that is extremely well mission aligned. And on the horizontal axis, you have some uh, financial metrics like ROI. So we can find things that may be very, very well aligned with our mission and our purpose as an EBA that don't have a high ROI that we may still want to pursue because it's extremely well mission aligned. Um, but we may also find things that are, that are not mission aligned that have very, very low ROI that we may want to stay away from. And so I think it, it gives you a little bit of extra flexibility. I think like my colleagues have, have mentioned with things like goodwill and intangibles, but I think that's why it's really, really important. I think to Kenny's point that we hear from RKG and I think we get may take some more steps like Mr. Ashcraft um, asked us to as we were taking a look at the bylaws to really get a, a solid understanding of, of what it is that we want to uh, to do here from an EDA perspective or from an economic investment perspective, because then the, the mix of ROI plus mission fit make a, make a lot so more sense. It, it, so I, it, it's like, so we, we would be looking for things that are in the top two boxes, top two boxes. Right? And, and so, and, um, to, to evaluate the right hand box, you'd end up having some, some investment metrics and then the left hand box would be more mission branding like this was intangible things so i think that is a phenomenal idea and so I, does everybody have one for everybody so we, we'll start to score them put them put them put them on that on that chart and uh and it doesn't need to be perfect but at least it, it begins to have we can have dialogue about where things fit and that does exactly what um, I was hoping is that we actually we begin to prioritize things, right? So there's no instead of just spraying all over the place, you know. So, all right, so that's great. Okay, um, Jay, thank you. That was a phenomenal idea. All right, so that's Mr. Chairman, did you yeah. also provide the um, the list of the concepts under consideration? Uh, there's three that, sheets. There are three sheets that we're getting ready to go through. Okay. And, and the second one was an example of a new B2C agriculture business. Right? And I just, I mean, I just made this up, right? But I, I don't think it's crazy. And just where there, where are there potential benefits, in, in, you know, that, that, that could come from getting a new farm started somewhere, or, you know, or, uh, and um, so I'm, I mean, they're they're. Four, four buckets that we could we could uh, contribute to, and continue, right? I mean, uh, the guy purchases or the girl purchases a new delivery truck. So there's personal property tax. Right? Um, so um, anyway, so that's just just um, it helped me think things through, and I don't know whether there are others. I, I, again, this was, this was just a prompt discussion. I don't know whether anybody else got any other ideas, thoughts, where, where um, okay. Are the figures that you're showing, are you saying that this would be the, this may be well, what I'm getting at those is, are we looking at those as possible investment lines that we would support? So we would Contribute to the purchase of a new delivery truck for. Uh, uh, okay. Maybe I was just uh, where I was trying to go with it is we were talking about all these, you know, the ag business, you know, and opportunities. And I'm thinking, all right, so what does that really do? Right. So we, you know, we, we, we get somebody into an education center and we set them up in a farm. Uh, you know, I mean, it's possible that this, you know, the sample that we're looking at is, is a result. Or, and that goes back to the intangible stuff you were talking about. Right. So how do you really put a number on it? And that education center. Um, but if, if 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 this is the final result, what we call it, you know, or um, you know, uh, um, again, I'm just trying to find a problem discussion. I'm trying to I'm trying to get my head around this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
we got, you know, we we looking for prospects and we get several. Now we want to pursue all all prospects. Based on what we get all over. Yeah. yeah, right. But I mean, are we are we trying to prioritize the three prospects? Which one would you go after, and the other two be on the back burner? Or not? We're not doing that. We want to go after every possible lead, which fits in the Jays' matrix. Right. But I don't see us. I'm, I'm trying to understand. I'm trying. I don't see us putting one ahead of the other at the at the viable prospects. You know, we're going after them all. You know. We're prioritizing to, 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 to get the, see what's the best investment for the candidate. This, 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 this is the discussion that we're trying to have right now, okay. trying to sort this out so that when we really start talking about opportunities, we have the ability to say that moves up to the top. And so, so, it, so Jay, going with your your deck on diagram, can we add in something else too? Because looking at the Next set of papers and what we've discussed before with like King William High School. Right now, the school year's over with. They're getting ready to graduate and we're shutting down the school for the summer. So now is a time that we could work with staff in order to bring in a greenhouse that would then be ready for them to pick up on school day number one beginning in the fall. Also, as was discussed with the last um, meeting that we had, the work session, most small farmers have already selected their farmers markets that they're going to, and they have scheduled those out for the summer. They know where they're going to be. Just like any other business, they know where they're tracking to and which ones are high importance for them to be at. So building up the research for that right now may be the best time to look at it as far as where would we put it, giving us the time to actually put that in place. But sitting here thinking of a business to bring in, and to Kenny's point, we've looked at and we've been approached several times as EEDA. The board has been approached. Country Courier has been lambasted. Dagon. Citizens have cried for a pharmacy. They want a Rite Aid or a Walgreens. We advertise for EDA members to join a board why don't we advertise as a county for a local owner operated pharmacist to come to this area? Here we go. This is exactly where, where we're going. So that needs to go in, in, in <clears throat> that needs to go into his matrix. And before we have a discussion about hypotheticals, let's figure out where that could go and what do we want. All right. So let's right. go back to the problem of market. We talked about all the different stuff, the depth of the we have not talked about. If we didn't have one, we already have one that's been established for the county. I don't know how many years. Tiffany might have an idea out there on how long the problem has been there. Um, it's longer than I've been here. So. Uh, my point is, if we did something here you know, on 360, are we going to hurt one of our industries we already had? So, okay, so that is a great segue to this. To this uh, right wrong? Uh, absolutely. The, um, anywhere you put it, so right here, I mean, this. Organization's been here. I, I have no, no idea how long, and I can't see us trying to do something to destroy something. Okay. Um. So, um. And is I this is this, is, this other, the, is, it, is this the whole? And the other side is. There, there, there were there were two pages. Okay. There are not too many. Really, only any dog farmers left that ain't a specific crop. So. Okay. So. There's beer run farming. So yeah, but not a lot. A lot of them have gone to you know. Yeah. So 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 step. That the goal is to is to get projects and opportunities to land on the matrix that Jay has has provided, and the way we get there is having a discussion about the pros and cons, and it includes tangibles and intangibles. Tangible return and intangible. So let's just take a a, a greenhouse at. Uh, at King William High, right? And this is this is there. I'm sure there are things I missed. This is just me trying to trying to start discussion and 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 provide a sample that that we can go and improve just like we did, you know, with Jay's Matrix. And and so uh, what I did is I, I I tried to sit down and think about the greenhouse, think about the pros and the cons, and then did the same for the farmers market and. Um, 
you know, one of the things on here is need to position so it's not adverse to the market. Right? And so that should be one of the talking points if you look under comments that's mm -hmm. there. And and so um, I'd, I'd like to have a discussion about the framework of which we have focused and targeted discussions about pros and cons so we can then move stuff into the matrix that you have. How do we do that? Is there a better way to do this? So if we're looking at trying to gauge some of this stuff for the community, instead of us trying to figure out what our community is thinking, why don't we public with these items, push it out for, as a survey? What do they want? Okay, that's the case. So we're, what, what I'm focused on is, is how we evaluate things, which is the question. Well, that's an evaluation factor, because if we're going after something that the community does not want it i'll give an example if we're going after a drive-in movie theater in king william county and the community does not want it then we're kind of barking up the wrong tree no matter really whether it's a great return on investment or not because our core users within the county the the tax money that could be utilized to establish it they don't want so I'm just saying as one factor that's in there, we simply ask out of these things, you know, we've at, we've sent out surveys before and asked all kinds of different things with parks and rec and everything else. What would be the, what would be your top priorities? If we sent these out, you know, what are the county's top priorities out of these? Do they see utility in going after any of these? And basically laying it out for them just as another factor, because then we've got, not only then you've got our attention on it, but you've got community buy-in on it also, which is sometimes the needed piece that we don't have when we go after things. All right, question. Uh, uh, last night, you brought up that and he made a presentation. I think we need to listen to his presentation on a lot of stuff that he was presenting last night that the viewers. What kind of Well, yeah. He had an excellent speech. Yes, speech. And That's I mean, we need to kind of table this. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't geared towards economic development. It was, it was geared, geared towards county government generally. And how he wrote the different stuff, recreation, right. and everything else that right. he proceed to count the you know, to me it was interesting, and that some of that stuff people were saying, I think he needs to help with because the ball field is getting too small. He needs more places, more soccer field. You know, this is stuff that for the future of the county. So this, I'm just saying, I thought he had an excellent speech last night. You know, of looking at the vision of the county, how he thinks that we need to start looking at and growing. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. First, he was just giving an overlay of what he sees us way we should go as far as uh, this, the direction this county should go in, what we should do to make everybody happy. Hopefully, and, and a good start is this some of this, and some of what he was saying is you got father, mother, grandparents, we got generations of all people. I'm just saying, I think some of this we need to look at because it was outstanding last night. So um, um, I'm trying to figure out how we um, somehow the, the, this group has got to be able to sit down and have meaningful dialogue focus and it actually advances every single meeting so that we actually achieve stuff. And we're just that and, and, and I think I'm proposing that a framework and that forces us to have discussions, targeted discussions about specific things and moves it out of hypotheticals 
and and gets us to a place where we can we, we come in and we sit down and we're going to say we're going to talk about uh, King William greenhouses, the pros and the cons, and we just bang it out. It's a five minute discussion, and then we move on to the next one. Bang it out, and and um, then that should lead us to a place where we can then look at tangibles and intangibles, put it on the matrix, and then at the end of the day, we have this board. Mr. Ashcroft could help us. We put it up on the whiteboard, and then and then. You know, it'll be obvious that we have these three opportunities are at the top. What do we want to do? Mr. Chairman, I, I, I very much appreciate this uh, pros and cons diagram as a, as a starting point for, for discussion. I think the, it also occurs to me that trying to make sure that we have focus, set aside time to talk about the opportunities that are in front of us, right? So I think this is a, a terrific way to, to lay out. And I, you know, have been a part of all these conversations, but if you'd asked me coming in here, like, do you have four separate opportunities to, to weigh out at event? Like, no, we don't have four things going on here, but it's very, very clear that we have four. And then, you know, further, we could, we could add more to that. So um, I think it just goes to show us that as we kind of continue down the RKG path, um, learn what the, the study and the consultants have to tell us, there's going to be no shortage of opportunities for us to go after. What I think may be helpful is, you know, I think our regular business meetings where we're kind of reviewing new business, old business, um, those agendas may get so full that a robust dialogue about, you know, the four or five or six things that we have going on, pros and cons, may not be helpful but if we went back to a to a cadence of meetings where we had our normal business meeting where we were hearing from rkg and from uh from from forgive me i'm blanking on who else is on the agenda tonight and then had off month work sessions where we set aside those work sessions to to do the work of weighing pros and cons and mission fit and roi of greenhouses at King William, of farmers markets, of dedicated King William programmed educational facilities, um, and set aside those meetings to do nothing but dig into the to weighing out, you know, should we pursue this or that, then that would give us something actionable to come back at, to our, our regular meetings for. So, I mean, I think that this is um, tremendous, and I think maybe returning to a, you know, odd month work session, even month regular meeting sort of cadence of meetings may actually give us the time to actually dig into things as we know. It's, it's required because I, I think that even during our Saturday work session, I got frustrated that it felt like we were attempting to hit every bullet on the agenda, whether we talked about it or not, just to simply say we went through a four page agenda and then we were done. And for me, that's not a great use of time some of these things, like Jay says, we may have times where Greenhouse may take us one meeting completely just to discuss everything that needs to go into it, what we're going to do. All of those things have to have business plans associated with them and everything else. How are we going to lay this out? Whose responsibilities are everything? So going into to that type of agenda where, like Jay said, and that's how we used to run is our work sessions did not follow and are not required to follow the normal agenda um, process. So we can open it up for just that and hit one or two topics and be able to go through it. But I, this is a huge agenda even tonight. I mean, when you look at it, it's 54 pages and I, we've still got a, a 69 page report to go through. So, so, so in, in my opinion, this is the most important discussion we'll have tonight because this is strategic in nature. This is this is our strategy we're discussing. And what I know is that the people sitting here, I mean, they're, they're some smart people, right? And we're all coming from different perspectives. And if we can just figure out how to harness that and get it pointed and focused, I mean, we'll crush it. But we just got to get to a place where where, and maybe maybe the solution is. We just have work sessions where the only thing we're talking about is strategy and resources, right? And we're not having such a full agenda. Is it? Can we do that? Well, your bylaw 
when we get to that portion of the judgment on there, your bylaws, you have to make a decision. The bylaws say you're only supposed to meet every other month, and you have been meeting every month. You can go ahead and amend the bylaws to meet every month, but establish the fact that one is a regular meeting, the other is a work meeting. So, and we'll need to have some dialogue on that because there are also some, some uh, it, it gets, uh, um, we, we, we're, there's plenty well, of, it, you plenty know, of, I, this is all well and good. And, yeah. and, yeah. but are we getting the horse before the car? Yeah. I mean, to me, we need to take RKG's analysis, their recommendations, a way we should pursue economic development and, and then try to lay the groundwork to, to get these people in. Then we go, we, we got some leads. Yes. Then we try to prioritize. Yes. Uh, but we, we first got to get our uh, act in order. So, so yeah, so what, 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 I'm, what I'm hoping we can do, and I think this is possible, I, I'm, like I was kind of saying, we got some smart people sitting here, is that it, it, um, the, the fastest way I know how to get from here to there is to move everything forward you can until you can't move it forward anymore. And so we're having a dialogue around our strategy and how we'll evaluate things. And at the same time, we got Kyle who's helping us and is going to bring some stuff back. And if we've got agreement in place on how we're going to look at things, then we're already set to go and evaluate the stuff as soon as it hits. And, 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 and so I, I think that we can cover more faster if we do things sequentially rather than in series. And I, I, I know we can do it. I mean, we got plenty of horsepower here. So, 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 but everybody's going to be okay with it, you know? And, and, uh, so that's the part I need to make sure, like, make sure everybody's okay with it. And, it, and, and, it, and it's, it's, it thinks right and it feels right. You know, it has to be both. Right. Right. Okay. outside of that. Now, when we started having more activity with the EDA, we moved it to once every other month. Then we added in the work sessions. We also had working groups that were targeted on specific areas that were doing those things. So it doesn't all have to be accomplished with this body. It can be accomplished with smaller groups out of this body that are targeted on greenhouse, working with the high school. Like, all of that. Wait, we, I'll, I'll tell you, we're doing a heck of a lot more now than we did years ago. We met quarterly, and to be honest with you, I think we just met to be just meeting. And yeah, I remember asking the county attorney one time, you know, we need to get into some more economic development. He said, no, your duty is just to deal with the bonds, you know, when they come through. You remember that? Yeah, I, that's, yeah. true. that's why we don't have it. Well, well, well you're, in, but, you're in economic development authority. You're not an industrial development authority. That that definition was covering IDA, not an EDA. Right, an right. EDA. Now that's what what is back then it was IDA. Yeah, yeah. 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 we were first in, in, put in place as an IDA. I see. Well, maybe you were right there. Yeah. Well, anyway, just just, just to clarify, yeah. yes, um, ma'am. The bylaws 
say that the regular meetings are bi-monthly. They don't say anything about work sessions, but I'm game for work sessions on the opposite corner. Well, and we at one point we we discussed because the work sessions, if we put them on the calendar, then they're called meeting. So we would basically utilize the regular session to at the end of that, whether or not we are meeting the next month for a work session or not. We could call it on or off at that point and still have time to do it. So, so I'm um, I'm not burdened by what happened in the past relevant day. And, and what I'm focused on is what we want to do. And I want to spend my time looking ahead, not the rear. And so right. whatever whatever was done in the past, it was done in the past. Let's talk about what we want to do and how we want sure. it and how we want to do it. And I think that will be more helpful if, if we just unburden ourselves. Um, from that stuff, um, and I and I, I appreciate. I, I just I thank you all for letting me drive. I mean, I'm, I'm I know I'm pushing, and uh, I um, and I, and I know that we're we all want the same thing. That this county's awesome, right? And so we're all heading the same direction. We're just um, so if I'm pushing a little too hard, I, I, I guess I'm trying to say I'm sorry. Um, um, Okay, so let's see. So, what's next? Uh, that was a chairman's report. So, I guess we need to summarize, don't we, Chris? So, we've got a matrix that Jay's matrix, right? The, the four quarters or four quadrants um, that we'll use as the goal to, to prioritize and to, and, and to assess risk and all those sorts of things, right? Return. And and then we've got this um, this spreadsheet, this concept you know, under consideration where we do the pros and cons. Is that is that will we, we gel on that idea that we will sit down, we'll take an idea, and we'll bang it out, pros and cons, and we have to spend a whole day on on you know something. We'll we'll spend it, but if we can move fast a little bit faster, is that is that is that work for everybody? Yeah. All right. So, Chris, let's we just. Um, that was good. Um, we're good. Okay. Um, let's see. We got unfinished business, and we we reorganized uh, or we prioritized things. So we've got seven A, um, which is uh, phase one, the, the final report. And I'll confess, I haven't. I think I got it today. I didn't have a chance to go through it. Is um, but uh, uh, Mr. Ashcroft, are you are you good with it? Did, did you have a chance to, to look at yeah, it? Yeah, we've looked at it. I don't uh, know that there's any surprises from what Kyle has presented all along. I think it was just you know, put into the to the format in which uh, it flows. And yeah, I mean it's everything that he said he was going to deliver. I, I believe you did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, right, one they were talking about the doctor's office. Well, maybe we can do that the next meeting. I know we have other stuff. 
up. That's why you're chatting so over it. These are just some of the terror attacks. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, um, um, so how, how, how do we want to do this? We want to send corrections. Um, uh, um, to Chris, is that, is that how we should work, address this? So, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Are, is RKG on tap according to their contract to take corrections based off this report? Okay, we'll correction. Well, what I'm saying is yes. Okay, because I had asked Chris also if, because this is a very large report, and I expected that, of course, we would read through it. I've read through a portion of it, haven't had time to read through all of it, but are we getting a brief or? Are we just going to go through this? I don't understand how it's being briefed to the EDA. Well, so this started with, I just asked Mr. I got it today. I haven't looked at it. I asked Mr. Ashcroft if, if he was reasonably satisfied with it. He said, is that it? okay. Now there, there are some corrections that, that we need to have addressed. Okay. So let's, what, and my question was before we get into it, you know, how do we, how do we want to, I mean, Charlie pointed out a couple. And so we need to make sure they're addressed and get them incorporated. My question was, do we send them to, do we send our comments to Chris and have her compile them and then send them to, uh, uh, to Kyle? That's I mean, it seems pretty that's easy, that's way, right? Yeah. And I would just confirm that twice before we got into sure. it. Oh, know. there, I mean, uh, again, and, 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 the vice chair is correct. And again, we're talking like Kyle's not here. He's in the room. He wrote <laughs> he, he, wrote, he wrote the statement, you know, there's different definitions of doctor's offices, and I don't know what, you know, what, is there clinics, is there offices, how did he get to that number? Maybe he skipped something, or maybe uh, maybe he had a better, different definition. I don't know that anybody's right or wrong, it's just, these are well, things that should be brought up. Yeah, well, so, yeah. Well, yeah. That's why and, that, and that's why each of you should read the report from cover to cover. Uh, look at it for not just uh, factual information but philosophical information that's right uh because you may have a different uh approach that that he did in his uh in his discovery that we need to, to talk about so yeah. i wouldn't approve this tonight i would read it i you know i would I, I, I would say. accept it tonight as being submitted and then you at your next meeting or work session whatever that's going to be we send the comments to Chris. Yeah, she, she then, to then uh, those move. would those would all come back to everyone. They would be given to Kyle. He'll have a chance to to uh, talk about those, and then hopefully to the satisfaction of the board, at some point you approve the document. So I just tell you, you guys. Uh, um, um, my wife reminded me last night when I forgot to take the trash out that I wasn't perfect, and and uh, so um, anyway, I, I think we all make mistakes. Yeah, what yeah, um what did yeah, we yeah. we got a draft a few days back, right? May fifth. Yeah. So what? This is the same. This is the same one. Oh, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. We just we just ran it off and give it to you because this was sent to everyone. Yeah, yeah. I got this. Like yeah. May fifth. Yeah. yeah. But, so, but we no, just ran I it off. It. That's what we're. That's yeah. part of what you're doing. It was. It was I in our email. It came through on an yeah. email from you. So. Yeah. Well, I've been reading it. But that's what I was asking is that yeah. the, the way that I just wanted to be clear on what we expected from this tonight, like our review oh, process. Kyle's Cal, going to tell us what he's, he's going to talk to us about this. And, and I'm sure he's, one of his questions would be if you got any correct, you know, a correction going up, right? Well, for me, I would prefer to have a review of the document, make corrections, submit the corrections or submit comments to clarify what is in here so that Kyle can address that and then he briefs us on it. Well that's not we're set up tonight. We've got he's here and and so he's we're set on he's prepared to give us a brief and we can invite him back and uh, uh, I, I mean we, I have we, to agree with what the high because what you going over it when I have conflicts and it will be other conflicts, why should we have to brief until we get all comments answered? Okay. Well, let's see what you want to do. You want to make a motion? I'll make a motion like that. Yeah. All right. I'm trying to understand now. What, 
Well, we'll go ahead with the motion. We'll have a discussion. Well, Mother, so you're giving us an opportunity to read over this so we can look at it because he's not having an opportunity. And this thing, he's going to be to read because I am in that service. All right, so we're going to, we're going to. And postpone his going over it. And the next meeting, we bring up our questions and all address it to him. He can come back and look over, go over the thing. Then the following meeting, come back. Mr. Chairman, I have a point of, point of order. I think there's a there's a motion on the table, so the appropriate next step is to see if there's a second. Oh, thank you for the okay. second. Second. All in favor? Oh, call for discussion. Call. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right. So if we, we are going to make comments to this draft, this and then send them to Chris. I mean to cop to Chris. Chris sends them to Kyle, and then we come back. And he's going to address them, and then we come back to the next meeting and look at the whole picture with our time. So, so that's what, I'm doing. what I would recommend, and this is how industry normally handles it, because I'm going through a report right now. I send it to my customer, they review, they provide comment and feedback back on that report. Most of it is going to be back on just things that they want clarification on, more ex expounding on a certain position or something. That then comes back to me. I review, update that document, and then send that finalized document to them for them to review and say, yep, that's good to go. And then we have a brief on it. I don't think that it'll take two more meetings for us to go through it. I think that what my next question was going to be is, when do we need to have comments in? And I would think a week would be long enough to have comments in to Chris. Those are compiled, sent to Kyle. Kyle adjudicates those comments within the document and then updates the document. And in our next session, he's able to brief the final. He sends out the updated document. We look at it, review that final document, and then we go forward and he briefs us off that final document. My only concern with where we are now is that I don't want Kyle to brief something that Charlie has found issue with because it'll just lead us down a whole discussion okay. as to why there's a, a problem with that. Okay. So That's like, basically what I said. Right? Yeah. I mean, I thought I, we comments, Kyle address them, we come to the, and then he'll send out that report before our next meeting, and then we'll discuss right at our next meeting. That's it. That's that's right. that's a discussion point. Okay. Think, does anybody else have, have comments, and then we'll try to close this thing off. Do we have Do we have reason to believe that like the summary that he's going to give us today is going to be substantially different based on the comments? We don't know. Right. So I don't know that there's a problem with a brief summary of the report just to orient us so that when we go to read it, kind of have a May, may I may I step in here just for a moment? This is Kyle, by the way. Sure, absolutely, Kyle. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Uh, I I I don't have so so for for my perspective, I don't have an issue if the board wants to take a look at the document before we have a more substantive conversation. I think the last point is probably accurate, where the changes aren't going to be well. Let's hope they're not going to be substantial. But to that point is, if the group feels more comfortable having time to take a look at the document, give some comment, uh, and then I can address those comments, and then we can come back, and then everyone can, can be in a better position for the discussion, that is not a problem for me. And so I, to try and make it as easy on you at all as possible, I think I'd be, I'd be fine with that, particularly given the fact if we are going to move forward with phase two, we're going to get into additional conversations beyond just what's in the phase one document as we move forward. And so we'll be able to make sure that any happy to glad changes, any clarifications that you need based on the data that I collected versus the information that you know, we can continue to make those adjustments. Because remember, this is just a phase one document. The, the strategic plan recommendations, what you guys. Hey, Kyle, we lost you there for a second. Turn your mic on. Sorry. Yeah, I got kicked out for a moment. I apologize about that. Of course, the only time that I have disruptions is when I'm trying to say something, right? 
but uh so at any rate you know as i and i apologize where you lost me but um you know i'm happy to take a take a step back let everybody have a chance to review it give comment back i can make the adjustments and then we can go through it to make sure everybody feels comfortable where we are because in phase two is we're really going to start digging into that strategic recommendations and actions where you started the conversation earlier today around you know how do we prioritize projects what are the what are the factors that we want to look at you know where do we want to put our investments first second and third and so we have time to continue to go through this because this is only the phase one part i think the part that you're all going to be much more excited about and interested in is the phase two where we start to dig into specific action items and prioritizing those action items based on our available resources Mr. Chairman, my only comment related to the to the motion that's on the table is that it's my belief that an overview specifically of the target industry starting on page 13 and continuing to page 18 uh, is probably the meat of the report that we've not yet heard directly from Kyle. And any comment that I would have about the veracity of any of the claims that are made here would only be aided by a general orientation to content by its author. So uh, I would uh, have a tendency to think that we should uh, honor Mr. Talente's time, uh, and allow him to just run through the report rather than, um, you know, get too caught up in some small observations. Are there any other comments on the motion? One second. Okay. Um, I, um, just going to say the fact that I haven't read this should have no bearing on Kyle's presentation. And, <laughs> and, and whether or not I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm qualified to sit and listen. So, um, and I've, um, I'm grateful to Chris that she sent this thing around again today. I just, I missed it when it came out. So, um, let's, let's, uh, let's take, let's, um, what, Jay, what do we do? So, so you the motion again, so we're clear on what the motion is. So the motion is to, as I understand it, the motion that's on the table and has been properly seconded is to delay the presentation until we have had the opportunity to provide comment. There it is. We'll take a vote on that. <laughs> All right. So all in favor? Aye. Of delaying? Aye. All opposed? Aye. 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 There it is. Kyle? Um, Which way to go? Yeah, so, um, we're, um, so Kyle, Kyle um, why, don't you, why don't you walk us through what you got? Okay, I'm happy to. So I appreciate the time this evening. Um, uh, to be respectful of everyone's time, especially since the question was around the target industry clusters that were in the back, I'll give you a kind of overview of the beginning part of the document and then we can get kind of into that meat of the conversation. And so the first, the first part of the report really is around all the data analysis that we did to try and understand what the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats were for King William County relative to trying to attract businesses to the community. Um, so that was one of the, the, the primary asks that the EDA had of us when we first got under contract, which is what types of businesses should we be trying to bring to the county? And so we went through a number of quality of life issues. We went through uh, local and regional employment information, looking at where existing clusters are both within the county and within the region uh, and try to distill all that information into if RKG was to be in charge of investing King Williams money and investing its time in trying to pursue companies that we think would have the greatest interest of being there, these are the clusters that we think would most want to do business in King William County. And so there's a number of reasons for that. Um, obviously our location, just to kind of give you a, a synopsis of that, our location is, is very advantageous. We are kind of wedged in between three primary markets, Hampton Roads, the Richmond market and the Washington DC market. And so our ability to serve all three is, is fairly high. Um, it's trying to take advantage of the existing land and physical assets that we have. We had to be respectful of um, the, for example, the labor force that we have available to provide to employers and, and what that looks like. 
I know you had when I sat in on that Saturday meeting, there was quite a conversation around the quality of the labor force and the size of the labor force. And I will say the size is probably one of the most pr prominent issues that we have is just we just don't have a lot of people. And so we kind of distilled all that information and brought back to you what we think were the clusters that if you are going to actively pursue companies to come and, and try and do business in King William, these are the sectors that we would go after. And, and they're not listed in any particular order in the report, uh, and they're not listed in any particular order here in my notes, so I'm just going to go through them one by one. So the first I have here is transportation warehouse, which is everything from distribution of goods and fulfillment centers to cold storage facilities to the logistics that is needed to coordinate transportation. Uh, and, you know, you have to have a center, for example, where you uh, coordinate your different delivery trucks to be out on the road to make sure that everybody's doing their thing and hitting their delivery points on time. And so the transportation warehousing cluster is one we think that could be very successful in King William. And it's a lot of it is around first reason I talked about. Oh, Kyle, we lost you. Uh, there you go. We lost you again. And so, sorry about that. And so, um, you know, I, I want to be very clear, particularly on this one, when we talk about scale, because I think that's going to be an important part of the conversation as we move forward, is when we talk about transportation, we're, we're not talking about a million, a million and a half square foot distribution center for Walmart. I, that is not something that I think is going to be very attracted to King William County. And that's predominantly because while we are connected to these three markets, we're not right on an interstate. And so those types of businesses require on and off capacity to be able to move goods efficiently. But what I am talking about is local and regional suppliers, distributors, um, businesses that are working in Hampton Roads, are working in Richmond, that this kind of strong mid-Atlantic market would have an interest in being part of your community. The second area that we talk about is around agricultural and forestry. And obviously you already have, this is probably your biggest cluster that you already have here in King William County between West Rock and the uh, lumber yard. And, but there are opportunities, not just to protect and grow that sector, but to build upon it. So everything from a production side, which would be like a, w looking at woodworking artisans, how do we have people take advantage of this resource that we have already here in the community to do things to create industry, create tourism, bring people to the community. Um, we talk about, you've already talked about the, the greenhouse with the high school that fits right very well within this sector, particularly around like an agribusiness incubator. How do we teach people how to become farmers? How do we teach people how to grow organically, for example? And so that that can be part of our economic development, particularly as the county seeks to preserve its very strong agriculture sector that it already has. But then there's also the agritourism component, which is not just trying to create products that you sell out, but create environments where you bring people in. And so we already have access to, you guys mentioned this the last Saturday around having the rivers and having river access and the benefit that that brings and the types of um, cluster that you already have around tourism. How do we continue to grow that? And so th everything from things like distilleries, breweries and wineries to pick your own, um, you talked about the Christmas tree farm idea already. You know, how do we create additional potential for like retreats or a venue that is right on the river, like a wedding venue, for example. And if we have them, how do we help market and strengthen them and build awareness, not just here within King William, but I can tell you firsthand, people will travel further than this to be able to have a destination venue for a wedding or a destination venue for a, a family reunion. And so between the production-based agriculture and forestry and the agritourism piece, I think there's an, an opportunity there. Uh, the third area is industrial manufacturing production. But I want to be very, very clear when I talk about that. We're not talking about like large smokestack or, or, or large scale. We're talking about makerspace. We're talking about um, artisans. We're talking about the small scale manufacturers that are supporting maybe some of the bigger operations that are already in either Hampton Roads or Richmond or in the greater DC marketplace. Businesses that are located along I-95, for example, is how do we create those venues where those businesses want to be close by, but they don't necessarily wanna pay the cost of trying to be right on 95 or right on 64. And so there's opportunities to bring in those small, mid small scale types of businesses. And when I say that I'm talking about like 
5,000 square foot, 15,000 square foot, 25,000 square foot users. I think that is where, based on the analysis we did, that's where the sweet spot for this county is going to be. The desire to go after a 200,000 square foot manufacturer that employs 600 people, you know, I, I don't know if that is where I would put my resources if I were the county, just because we, we already don't have a facility that does that. Um, we definitely don't have the, land, the labor force to be able to support that immediately. And I think that there are other areas, not just regionally, but nationally, that are going to be more competitive in that regard. And so it's not to say that a 500 person, 200,000 square foot business wouldn't want to be here. It's saying that if you're trying to invest your money, where would I put that money? Where would I prioritize based on that matrix that you're talking about earlier, Mead, um, in, in our resources? Um, the next is around um, taking advantage of some of the other natural resources that you have is around research labs. You have the fuller earth, you have local minerals, um, you have wetlands, you have the opportunity to try and work with entities like Virginia Tech's um, co-op or other uh, um, statewide or regional players to say, hey, we have these resources here. How do we attract or how do we get you to make some investments here to take advantage of what we have? This one is a little bit more speculative than the other ones we've already talked about, but it's definitely something that if you are interested in, you'd be able to pursue. And it's taking advantage of existing natural resources that you have. Obviously, healthcare and social assistance uh, is a tremendous one. Um, you, you'll have a, a notable population and it's growing. Uh, and particularly, you're, you're seeing substantial growth in folks that are 55 and older. That is not unique to your community. That is the baby boomer generation, which makes up a disproportionate share of our society getting older. And at, but the reality is within the healthcare industry, the older you get, generally the more medical services you demand. And so there are opportunities to draw upon that. Now, I don't believe we have the strength to draw a, a, a freestanding hospital, but there are ways to partner with existing hospitals for either urgent care facilities or trying to bring in more of those types of um, medical and healthcare uh, practitioners to our community to take advantage of the existing demand that you have within your community and the demand that's growing. I will say within the healthcare and social assistance, which is not really medicine based, but is probably gonna be of high demand within your community is childcare services and daycare services. A large portion of your population commutes out from King William County for work. Uh, they, they go to Hampton Roads, they go to Richmond, they go uh, uh, um, west and north to the DC market. And so providing the services so that folks can be able to live here and then have their care for their children, particularly the pre-school age children is a potential business opportunity because those folks are already coming here and they already exist here. And so that could be a business opportunity that the EDA considers to either help attract or help stand up as, uh, as a way to both create jobs and also help folks that are employed that are already in the county. And then finally is around what we call or deem entertainment and recreation, which is really around the additional tourism. I talked about access to the water. I know you had a long conversation uh, that Saturday meeting around, well, is it a marina? Is it portage for kayaks and canoes? And we think that there's an opportunity. I agree, by the way, with the comments from that previous meeting, maybe it's not a heavy marina, but maybe it's growing and building upon existing opportunities, a portage company, for example, where you put in at one end and then you come out the other end and then we bring you back to your car, trying to build upon and create conveniences and clusters around those entertainment and recreation businesses so that you can what's called extend the stay. So the idea is not to have Kyle come down from Alexandria, go canoeing with his children get back to his car at six o'clock and then drive home again. The idea is to create a, a concentration of venues where I come down and we do kayaking one day and then we do archery the next day and then we do something else the day after that. That's really where, quote unquote, the money is, if you will, from a tourism perspective. So how do we build upon what we have? How do we make what we have more aware and how do we then attract additional users through investment so that we can create that length of stay? And this, by the way, ties very nicely into that agribusiness conversation we had earlier around things like pick your own, around the distilleries, the breweries, the wineries concept, um, because I can tell you firsthand, uh, if you have a cluster of 
of those venues, you are you can draw a substantial tourism base of folks who want to do that either a one day, two day, or three day venue. So that is kind of the nickel tour, if you will, of those pages that you identified, um, and where we see from if the county is going to proactively invest money and proactively invest staff, where we think you're going to have the greatest chance for success. Now, I will say. When your staff is your county administration and a volunteer board, then you're going to have to prioritize. It's, it, these are all, we believe, viable opportunities, but the reality is you don't have the capacity right now to pursue all of them. And so part of the conversation we'll have through phase two is, well, if we had to pick one or two, which of these one or two would we pick and why? And to kind of piggyback on that earlier conversation that I was listening to is, this is where that prioritization determining, well, is job creation most important to us? Is it tax base that's most important to us? Is it creating better quality of life for our residents that most important to us? Because as we have that conversation through this effort, then we're gonna be able to then start identifying, well, this one kind of bubbles to the surface because it has a better, uh, and I'm gonna pick on, on the healthcare issue, that's more about serving the population that we have and that's coming, not necessarily trying to attract investment from the outside. And if that's what our priority is, is quality of life for our, our residents, then let's focus on how we do that. And then that's a different set of target industries than saying we want to create jobs that provide healthcare benefits and have a pension plan, which is a different set of priorities of what we would go after. So that's kind of the, the nickel tour of that part of the document. Um, I will say, and I, and I want to address this because we've been talking about this a couple times, the conversation around retail. There's a whole section in the document that talks about retail. If you go into the appendix and look in the PowerPoint presentation, we um, get into a very detailed discussion around retail. And so I want to make sure if that is what becomes the priority of the county is trying to bring that pharmacy into the community, then let's talk about what that's going to take, which is a lot more people. OK, so I think I, I use that as a microcosm of the example of the conversation that we need to have, which is what are our priorities? What are the things we are willing to accommodate to attract the types of companies, the types of businesses, the types of jobs that we want to get? So that's that's kind of the nickel tour of that section. And, and I'm, I'm very excited. I, and I will tell you, I, there's no concern on my part about delaying a little more substantive conversation, more detailed conversation. I am much more excited about clients that are engaged, that actually, th that want to be in that conversation than kind of just going through the motions. So um, I'm happy to have whatever conversation now, but I'm also very excited about when we have the chance, after you had a chance to digest all of this a little bit more, to get into it a little bit more in the weeds. Nice. Thank you um, for being so gracious uh, in, in uh, your um, interest in receiving comments. It's, it's appreciated. Is, is there, do we want to have any discussion about this? I mean, is there inputs, comments? Um, Kyle, thank you. We'll, we'll compile comments we have. We'll get them to Chris. Chris will get them to you. Uh, we'll figure out uh, uh, internal date by which we want to get those to you and we'll get them to you in enough time that you, you're able to respond um, uh, before we're at the meeting. So. Absolutely. And, and, and Mead, um, please let me know when you want to have that conversation, whether it's at a, a scheduled meeting or if you want to do a separate scheduled meeting, I'll make sure I get it on my calendar. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Um, next on the agenda, uh, we moved uh, um, uh, did Tracy Porter up? Is, is Tracy with us? No. No? Okay, that makes it easy. One less thing to do. Um, so let's see. So um, now uh, we got the farmers market update. Mr. Ashcroft. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, at, uh, at our meeting, at our work session, it was, uh, we were charged to do some investigating regarding the farmers market. And, what I've been able to uh, identify so far is that the high school parking lot is open to a farmer's market uh, opportunity. Uh, and I believe you were looking at the hours of afternoon, mid afternoon, the early evening, somewhere around from there. Uh, the last three 
Friday to July were options that I thought the board might want to consider for your pilot, not to do all three, but to pick one of those three. And uh, we have to fill out a, uh, a use permit and give it to the school uh, for its approval. But that's uh, pretty much a formality. It just lists all the things that we're going to be doing there and, you know, all the good safety and security and just a number of different things that are involved in that. Um, so that's kind of where we are. And it goes back to what I said earlier. If the establishment of that market is something that you want to do, like, even if it's as a pilot, you need to turn us loose. And uh, we were to work with Ms. Williams to identify uh, possible vendors, uh, possible activity that would be there. Our, I think, is a, we need to figure that out. And then I've also uh, uh, asked the uh, extension office if they would become a, a partner. I think they're very. Uh, you know, they're obviously that, that's the nature of their business as well. And, uh, so we'll meet, with, we'll meet with those folks. So once, once, once we get definitive direction from you, then we'll, uh, we'll begin the, the test. So there are a couple of things um, relative to this, right? So we've got uh, insurance, we've got coordination, we've got staging, right? There, there's some details that um, we either need to figure out or delegate. Um, and then, and then um, we may need, as, as, as we think this through, we may need to get insurance from the people who are going to participate in business licenses. And that, you know, I, I, I don't know where all this goes. No, yeah. um, no I have to do either one of those. Okay. The school, the school's uh, insurance would cover any, well, any injuries. Uh, and business license or something like this would not, would not be necessary. Okay. Um, this Tommy so, everything. There, 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 was, there was something in here in the packet about getting insurance and additional insurance. Well, I mean, I can check again, but I just, you know, I'm speaking from my own experiences. Uh, whatever government entity is having something on its property, it's insurance coverage. So, yeah, so, so there was this the, the King William Public Schools facility use, and applica use, use application. It's, it, it, it does talk about additional insurance. And so maybe because it's a county. Instead of a, in, a, a, a private, right? Maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. That, maybe I mean, that gets us. Yeah. Gets as us. far as the business licenses, I would expect any vendor probably has has a license anyway. If not, we can check with the Commission of Revenue to see if that's a requirement. I don't know that possibly it is. Possibly not. Yeah. So, at least from my interpretation, when we got our business license, a farmer only needed a business license if they were selling products other than what they grew. Or so um, it's possible that they don't, but most farmers markets, and some do and some don't. So New Kent didn't require it from us. Um, does. And the same thing for certificates of insurance. It really depends on the county and what they're doing. I can have further details with the requirements for that's the only concern. That is now. also that's also dependent on the market. So with Williamsburg requires that everything be for a certification or an inspected facility. Right. Whereas other markets specifically want to bring in their their county small cottage right. that have state cottage exceptions. And so it really depends. Is there any way to pull the agreements that other counties have with a vendor? to see what that language looks like. So we have a starting point. So I'm sure one is pretty big that we have to share that. Probably have a as well. And so that was part of what I was going to work with. Okay. So I'm not kind of identifying what kind of framework we want. Right. At least for this kind of program. This makes me smile. I, I tell you, we've got smart people here, right? So we've, so we've got these subject matter experts. I mean, we just need to listen to them, right? Like that. Okay, um, so what do we do with this? Uh, um, I mean, I, I think that the, I mean, the next step, I guess, in my mind would be to say, if we were to proceed, this would be a target date, I think, as Mr. Ashcraft suggested, and then we could take next steps to just try to, you know, figure out whether or not we would have vendors who would even be interested in 
and participating in such a thing. Um, and it seems to me like there would be a, a series of steps that, you know, if we meet this threshold, then we would go to the next step. So if we get vendors to come, then we would say, okay, how do we, you know, get the word out and how do we have initial conversations with Thomas Produce and, you know, those sorts of things to make sure that we're not stepping on toes. Uh, but I mean, I think that the, the idea is a great one to try to put a spotlight on especially King William County growers and so far as they exist. And I know that there you know, may be some disagreement about that, but um, I don't know, it just seems like a terrific opportunity to, to really shine a light on some things that are already happening in the county. So, okay. Um, I guess the other, the other thing, do you want to start? Or, or I think we want up, people just opening this up as a pilot. Just I think we just want people. Yeah, I would right. rather have participation. Okay. I think there's good because questions. People right? in that area going to businesses that are in that area after the fact, I think that opens up an opportunity. Plus, I mean, personally, I agree we need to talk to Tommy's produce about it. But if he's open seven days a week and we are talking about doing this once, it, on a weekend um, for that time frame, I say we invite him to. It's she. She, sorry, um, to to that um, you know event at, as a community event, not that one necessarily look at it as something that would draw attention away from their business itself on that weekend. I think when we were talking originally, but it's by somebody they brought up doing it on a Friday evening, making it more of a family function where we have food trucks and vans. Right. So it, I think if you reach out to them and say, you know, this is an opportunity, like you said, that they can kind of have a place, yeah. but also kind of stress that you're going to be inviting vendors that also do like woodwork or things like that, not just necessarily their, their direct right. competition. Jay gave us great advice, right? Let's let's think about it in concentric rings. Let's take the next step. Let's see if vendors, if we, if we can attract folks. Um, and then, then if we can meet that threshold, then we take the next logical step. The challenge is going to be that we're not going to, we, their meetings are so far apart, right? So I think, I think we're, if we're going to actually do this, we're going to have to like delegate and and that's another issue, right? The bylaws that, that we're proposing say we can't delegate the staff, but but, uh, but we, last weekend we were talking about two, the delegate two staff, right? And um, well, we we'll get to that one. We are your we are your support. Well, yeah. I think we always will be. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, I, well, I think well, that's what it is. I mean, I think if the board is comfortable, then. And I, I would be perfectly happy making, you know, I mean, you said that the, Mr. Ashcraft, that the 15th, 22nd, 29th were all open. Yeah. Um, 22nd is better for me than the 29th. So, I mean, I think if, if there's no issue with kind of making July 22nd our target date, um, just empowering, you know, our, our, our friends at the county under the under the, the deep supervision of our colleague to, to yeah. kind of take the next steps and work it till it can't be worked anymore. The Little League ends, um, well, the All Stars start the first week of June, or start, they start their two weeks of trial practice the first week of June. So all the All Star tournaments. Are the 17th, and then of course, if they advance, then they go beyond that. But the first round of all charge on the 17th of June, okay. they should be well done before July. Well, I, that's what I was asking. Yeah. I was wondering about the other stuff that's going on in the county and what they have to do. So, so well, you know, well, this, this would be this would be my recommendation is that we, we, we're not going to be there to make decisions, but we can outline a process. And if you hit a green light at every step in the process, we're with you and, and you just go, right? So the first step, and, and if we're just like, let's think this through. So the first step is vendors and getting us to have, have a staff do a survey uh, and, and find out if we can get sufficient people there. And, and I think that would be step one, right? We get green light there, then, then we keep going. And the next step will be uh, to, um, to actually think through 
through the, the details related to the, how, how this will come together. So we've got interest from 10 people. How are we going to stage it? Where do they go? Where is it? Signage, all, all those, right? Um, Jake, come on, help me here. Um, I, mean, I do think that the cost is something to really think about. I mean, I know if, if I put $5 down, I'm more likely to show up. To something than if I just say, yeah, that's a really important cut to do. So you know, and that makes me think that maybe we ought to be thinking about like that we do a band or some music or something. So it's more than just a like it's not it's really try to try to activate it. You know, give people a reason to come. All right, question. What? He used to be on Friday nights at the high school and TV show for dogs. That's still going on. No, it's still going on. I don't think so. Uh, I, I was not. I was not told of that. I didn't know. I, that would be better. I don't think they've done it since COVID. I would just, you know, but I know before I've been to it more than one time, but the whole block on that floor has taken off. Well, once, one was still coming out. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know they do really existed. I, I just came to it one day. I, I don't think we would want them in the same, because the area where they would they'll probably set up the farmer's market, I don't know that you'd want to have That's the empty cars in there because. That's a really good point. You have such a mix of people buying there, right? Yeah, <laughs> back <in the> staging, <laughs> right? Like back in the staging yeah. I didn't know if they were still going. That's why I asked questions. I don't believe they are. Well, but what what do you do? Um, do you think well, what is what is this this group's reaction to the thought of like trying to get a band or a, or some to play music or something other than than just 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 well, so really a hospital, right? Yeah, but see, we're going to work with them yeah. and the next thing is. Then we can figure out how successful this will be. Then we can look at the other options we want to go with. Find out first before we get carried away. Right. Well, no. Next meeting in June. Yeah. We'll have to go on. Yeah. But that's still a month away from it. I'm just saying, if everything works good and she has people coming, then we know we're already in the right direction. Well, the other thing, too, is I, I would tend to agree with that. If we've got 50 vendors in our mind, not want to add any other company to it simply because that's a lot to take on when this is our so, first time doing so, it. So, so this is this is where the, we outline the process. So if we get yeah, 50 vendors, we don't want to add anything else. If, 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 if we get a few vendors, then we need to think about how to activate it and, and get some get some right. there. I think and either so, way we should have food trucks. We yes, just, we just build it right, right there, mm -hmm. right? So that activates it. So and have the like turbos and the uh, blues ice cream truck, things like that, that are if people yes. have gone out to dinner in the community, they the still Hibachi want to come Express, by. Express, because I That's never knew that one. Right? That's a great idea. Great. It's, I think we need to be brainstorming between now and June that as long as we have proof of concept with the vendors, then we need to really have a robust conversation about how we get citizens there. Yeah, absolutely. And are we out of compliance if we're doing like an email, like where Sarah could update us and say, hey, would people be interested in this? Or could someone help you with this? Would our. Uh, so I would say that a good way to do that is like me can send an email to us just like Chris does. So Here's our agenda and here's everything. If you send us a update, like, hey, here's what we found out so far, everybody can kind of look at that. If you individually reach out to her and it's one-on-one, -on -one, then we're not in any violation whatsoever. But it's when we, we don't want to have a reply all because then we, it starts looking like there's a meeting occurring. If she can provide information. Yes, yes. I've got questions about that when we get to the bylaws. Or I wonder if Chris is staffing the system. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. would work. That's too. great. And you can respond to person. So the, the, the one thing that we touched on that we haven't done yeah, in, in reviews is <laughs> like making sure that we don't hurt anybody. Okay. Right? And so Tommy's and I, I don't, um, I don't know. 
I'm trying to think of who else who else it might be adverse to, but um, making sure that it's it, it's we if we do this, we position it in such a way that it's um, um, it's accretive for everyone. It's okay. Um, but, I, I just think that the best way to, if we're concerned about making sure that there are particular individuals who aren't, you know, ruffled or upset with what we're doing to communicate early and communicate often. So if anybody has a relationship with Tommy, I, mean, I think it might be worthwhile to just pick up the phone and say, hello, this is what we're thinking. Um, yeah. Let that be a data point. It closed at six, right? It closed so early. Like a five to seven hour well, I, actually, they may do seven during the weeknights, so they make it that five to seven cloud, and then their weekends are Saturday and Sunday. I think it's six on Saturday, five on Sunday. Right. Hey, group, again, what are we looking at the fr a Friday evening, or we're looking at a Saturday for this trial? Friday evening. Friday evening. Okay. You know, you know, likely where this farmer's market may go is, is, you know, back to the classic cars, I think I heard, there's a many towns and cities that actually have an old downtown that have had quite successful kind of Friday night out. And I think we got Jamin on the point, which is kind of similar in a way in West Point. You know, this farmer's market could easily turn into having other other local vendors, artisans and just a way for the community to come out, you know, eat at all the restaurants there in the Central Garage and kind of stimulate the economy, doing essentially everything that the EDA stands for. I actually think that if we sell it more like a family get together Friday evening, fun night, we probably will stand a better chance of not ruffling the feathers of commons. So, I just did think of a question. Um, Let's say that we reached out across the river to Dragon Run. Are we allowed, are they allowed to be a vendor and sell alcohol to us at school property? Probably not. Well, okay. We don't want to touch that. Well, you may want to touch that. <laughs> That's income. That's revenue. That would be there. But I, I would just wonder because of school property. Or I would say, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I, I think it is prohibited. Okay. At all times. Okay, so, so so how do we how do we reach out? All right, one other question. How about we can talk to more school property? That's that's prohibited as well. I was just asking. That's what I thought. That's why I just wanted to clarify about the school. We would put up some signs somewhere around us. Okay. But the Little Lake Park and places like that have the same rules. So I think oh, it's I pretty standard yeah. now. Oh, Chris, we have someone in the waiting room. So why don't we see where where this goes, right? And and then we'll have something to talk about. And if if we if we hit friction, we ought. I mean, um, the smartest person I have I've, I've ever seen. My mentor told me. Pay attention to whether you've got a headwind or a tailwind, right? And it's just easier sailing if you got a tailwind. And so if we start getting a headwind, then just we don't need hard you know, hard rowing. Well, and we also need to be aware that if there is something that comes up that's critical yeah. between now and our next regularly yeah. scheduled meeting, yeah. we can call a meeting, a special meeting, yeah. and it just has to be notified within five days. So we can call a special meeting. It won't be immediate, but we can get that information out and come back in prior to waiting until June. All right. Do we need to have any more discussion on this matter? I have one more question. Yes, ma'am. Um, can we create a survey to send out to local producers? Yeah. A wonderful idea. Just to get so that I mean, I can individually reach out to the people I know, which is maybe twenty or thirty local farmers, but. I know that there's other artisans in the area. And if we ever try to sing in the county, we could get us? them you, reserving a spot. Do we have a list of those, or would we just bring them all? So I have a list. And 
people that can specifically reach out. But I mean, if we if we announce through the through the county, then you would have your local artisans and bakers who could also that I don't know that can sign up. So my recommendation there would be that we don't go out and say we're doing, but we're we're surveying interest level, and so we we want to leave a back door. Tell me what the Tell me what your goal is on the survey. That's what I do for a living. So I can write the survey for you. So, I mean, that's that's as easy as like a link to a Google form, right? right. Yeah. On the website. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, county newsletter, things like that. Well, I will, I will caution you. I mean, it's going to take some time to put this together. If you're doing a survey and you're waiting a couple of weeks to get some responses before you decide to do it. I these, think you do it. These, I, well, think, I, think I think you announce you're having an event surveys. and you, you don't do it. Because this isn't this isn't going out to every individual with that's a resident of the county. This is going out to specific yeah, businesses. He, he makes a very good point. Town, town is not a problem. Yeah. Okay. He could always not have it because for whatever reason. But I think you announce that you're going to do it. We're moving forward. You got a time. You got a place. I agree. I think. I think yeah. if we can, so we have to have meat vendors. We have to have at least one vegetable vendor in the house. And if we can get, I don't know, five to ten producers to knit, then I think that we could say, okay, if we sell a date and then send out the, the announcement to the county for the other artisans to sign up as well. So the survey could answer some things like, sorry, Jenny, just some but, things like if you had to pay, if there was a fee associated with this, what do you think your fair fee is? And let them answer it. Oh, I know what I would say. Any other Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, if we were to kind of call it the farmers market and Friday night out, which I think is kind of cool. Um, I, I I didn't write down the the proposed dates, but instead of like a back to back, maybe having like the third Friday of every month or the first and fourth Friday, to at least I don't want to say if we mess up the first one. But it gives us a chance to say, hey, we're coming back, you know, this Friday, that next month. Or or if we had it positioned in a way that that people knew that we'd be doing this rather than a, a weekly event. That's what I thought, too. Even more so than just one time, because sometimes the first time is really good or it's really quiet because people haven't really thought about it. And really, it it probably, if we're anchoring it on a farmer schedule, it probably is only going to do July, August, and September because your fruit and vegetable growers are pretty much done. But if we're looking at doing like a set third Friday or fourth Friday, we probably should check King Williams football schedule. Yeah, I was going to say, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to get it after August. No, that parking lot's going to be filled. Yeah. There's always programs, whether it's football, basketball. Yeah. And even if they're, even if they have an away game, they still park their cars. But um, you got track and other stuff that's running. Yeah. So yeah. it might be this one over here, but these are running at King Williams. I mean, come August, if we're wildly successful, then, then we have a hard conversation about where does it go rather than, right? you know. Right. And, and there's this. And I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, if it becomes wildly successful, kind of phase two would be almost creating a nonprofit potentially. And then a crew that wants to continue to hold the torch, or I mean, if it's wildly successful, there's a much bigger feasibility um, in you know, how we continue it. But doing that one or that two, I guess, between us giving our time and hopefully the generous support of volunteers throughout the county, um, I think we could definitely pull it off. Okay. So, do we have a motion? Somebody make a motion so we can. Give her the keys. All right, the staff work together. We have to set some up parameters. She has a problem. Go. You. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. This was a, this was, this was, this was a huge step forward, right? I mean, we just actually like, like did something. <laughs> we did a thing, you know? <laughs> it's good. It's really good. Um, all right. Um, regardless of the outcome, I mean, we we got lined up behind one thing and actually figured it out. So.
So let's see. So um, let's see bylaws. That's the next thing on the agenda. The chairman, uh, nothing has changed since we talked to him that Saturday. Uh, Ms. Branch did a great job, I think, of uh, redlining. Uh, any, any improvements to the bylaws that uh, you would want? I was really primarily focused on identifying the purpose. I didn't think it went far enough for the uh, for the authority, but then she noticed some other things that needed to be cleaned up. It's your will and pleasure as to uh, so and the, and the meeting the meeting time establishing that you know tying that down because it does say in here every other month. I believe. So. Um, I, I did spend a little bit of time thinking about this, and I, I, I mean, is anybody else? I, I mean, I, um, I just wanted to hear what we were talking about the regular meetings that we do, just we did like here and have a work session on the other, every other month, month, I think, have set up. So we still want some month, but for one is for RG, OKG, and the rest of it is what we just did tonight. So we're not tying. And staying here to run the system, 12 o'clock at night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it'd be nice to, to, to get into more doing it. That's what I'm saying. Having it so we have, well, we have a need to go on on a regular meeting and have the work session, just like the board sure. go over stuff and crash out things. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And I put the two together. So, and I've got comments. I, I, um, I, I really, um, do we want to do we want to have a work session where we where we talk about this and we bring comments? I, I just I, this seems like a slippery slope we get into. It. <laughs> so I think that to we should coalesce around kind of the purpose of the bylaws and, and kind of if it's in the bylaws we have to do it right. Yes. We can do more than what's in the bylaws. Absolutely. Right. So what, when meeting schedules and things like that, I think that we should. We should paper up the bare minimum that we're going to do. And if the chairman wants to call a meeting on the subsequent months, for whatever reason, the chairman wants to call a meeting, then the chairman can call a meeting and we can all come to meet on a monthly basis. I, and I, so I think I, I, I hesitate to get too far into the weeds and the detail of even, I appreciate wanting to spell out the purpose with more specificity. The challenge with getting too specific um, and not just with purpose, but purpose, mission, or anything that we would do. The challenge with getting too, too specific is that if we decide that we want to have our monthly meeting at 6.30 rather than 7, then we're going to have to have a meeting to change our bylaws. And so we want to be as broad as we can be while being as specific as we need to be. And so I, I just say that as a word of caution, because the more detail we get in our bylaw document, the more we're bound to to it and bound to change it if we have to. And I will say that normally uh, bylaws are are addressed at the beginning of your of the calendar year. Uh, is that correct? Even for the for this group. So uh, I just took the opportunity to kind of spell out the the vision, the purpose. If we don't have to address any of this at this time. So uh, I just thought that you know yeah. we're kind of in a, a reorganization phase, new yeah. staff, new yeah. some new members. I just thought maybe you wanted to visit. So, you don't have to. Well, you can and, move and on. it's not a bad idea. It's just trying to figure out. I mean, you know, how, how to how to spend our meeting time, and that's the part that I'm. Uh, yeah, I just I worry about spending a bunch of time talking about policy. You know, and and and, and, and less time about actually doing it. Implementing, and so I mean, I, I mean, I've, I mean, I've, I've got comments. Like you know, um, originally it was the, there were really three things we were supposed to do: promote industry, uh, uh, develop trade, and inducing manufacturing and, and, and industry, and then the further further use of agriculture and, and agricultural products and natural resources. And then in this rewrite. It's it, you know the, the one the one of the three items is, is an afterthought at the end. It's just um, and there's and, and, and so I mean I think we could have some pretty good discussion around the purpose and refining that. But then there's there's other stuff too. You know like uh, Jay was.
was talking about regular meetings, um, uh, electronic participation, at, you know, deleting what's there and replacing it with state state code. And I, I wasn't clear on where the state code stopped. Um, and uh, subcommittees, uh, there's something that didn't quite write about uh, about um, like 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 two people as a meeting. But so does that does that mean that I can't? I mean, I can email somebody, if, uh, one person about like having a meeting, or is that a public notice? Or if I see somebody at the grocery store, can I say, oh, can you make the meeting tomorrow, or do I need to get public public, public, public notice? I just it's just it just and. Uh, this can't be right. I mean, I don't know who, who interpreted it, but um, it's straight out of the state code. That's what it is. Well, we need we need a lawyer who can who can interpret us and give us some give us some breathing. Right? We're actually um, no? going to work with the board of supervisors to try to get a training to have FOIA council come and do a training and that also do be... parliamentary procedure, which would be open to all the boards. Oh, parliamentary procedure is something I'm particularly focused on after this meeting. I'm, I'm, um, I'm, this is a complete segue. Thing. It's not so, but, um, so I'm, I, through another board, I'm on, uh, I have access to the National Association of Corporate Directors, and I will end up working on some uh, uh, Robert's Rules regulations. I'm sure things will be better here moving forward. So um, I appreciate your uh, life, uh, life raft every now and then, Jay. Um, all right, so. So yeah, we, yes, go ahead. Uh, vote by proxy. Clean that rule. I think I read in that way. Not allowed to vote by proxy. Yeah, my interpreted that is you cannot electronically you like any tonight. And I interpret that you can't vote. Well, I believe you too. Can he vote? Yes. Yeah. I he's, think that he's not a proxy vote though by electronic means. Right. Because we have agreed to allow him to attend this meeting via electronic means. Proxy means that I have someone stand in my place and vote for me. Right. Oh, okay. That, that's right. So I, I just, I, I, my in other words, words, you just answered my question. Yeah. I should have done it. You can't have someone stand in for you. Right. I'm with you. But we ought to be able to find an attorney to give us some reading. So one, my my recommendation is that we table the bylaws. And uh, uh, so, so the one saying? thing that I would recommend that we do add in is the electronic ability for members to attend because that's updated based off of. COVID and what the state code currently says about how we're able to bring people in via electronic means. The, the state code overrides your bylaws. You, so if you violate it, you, you can't make a bylaw that goes in direct contradiction with state code. So for that, you know, whether it's in your bylaws or not, it's still allowable because it's the state code. But at the same time, if we cite specific state code and that state code is no longer right in enacted, our bylaws are still, you know, so. You're still bound by the code. The you're still bound code. by the code, but we still have to go back and clean it up every time. Yeah, and that's all this was, was changing it since they did change. Except the sections where we're citing state code. I mean, if as long as the, the language mirrors state code, then that's what we yeah. want. So what do you all want to do with it? I, I just, I'm focused on trying to get stuff done, and but at the same time, like Jay, I would think that I mean I do think and I appreciate what Mr. Ashcraft has done, and I think some conversation focused around the purpose and the mission. I, I know that we're we're maybe it's not tonight given the time, but uh, he's offered I think a, a a robust and compelling vision for what we ought to be up to. And so having digging into that a little bit, I think is 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 well worth the time. Um, and then I mean some of the other changes that need to be made in here are just perfunctory, I think, more than anything else. So I mean I, I do think we should set aside, you know, 15 minutes to really talk about it, the purpose specifically, um, maybe at the next meeting and then kind of figure out where we want to go from. So we bring comments, we, we all bring our comments to the next meeting. 
and we and we spend 15 minutes reviewing it, discussing it, trying to make a decision, and move on. Okay, you, Jim, why don't you turn it into a motion? I move. You're fast on that one. I move for that. <laughs> so move. Can't so move it. <laughs> Do you have a second? So what is what is the motion? Are we what he's table? Saying. Are we tabling everything? Yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily think we need a motion. I think we should. The, the chairman can just table this until right. the next meeting. And I don't we can think just we come have back. A, if we're tabling the entire look at the bylaws, then you can table it until the next. Yeah. One. I don't think we need to to have a motion simply to table. Yeah. And the chairman can request that his colleague come to the next meeting prepared to have a fifteen minute right. discussion about well, the purpose. There it is. So everybody come prepared. Here's a question though. Are we having an official meeting next time or are we going to be having a work session? That's, you, yeah. you, can, uh, you, can, you can vote at work sessions if you need to. Yes. Is, is next month in the bylaws a, 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 a meeting? No. Well, the chairman can just call me. So I, I, um, I liked when we were sitting at the table, around the table, looking at each other, right? As, a, as opposed to half of the room. You know, at the time, and um, I, 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 um, I like being further away from no, the camera. Sorry. I like I have both of you. What's that? I have both of you. Yeah. When you sit on the end, you well, get the whole view. Okay. So, so um, anyway, I don't know whether that that gets track of anybody else, but I, I, I mean, I, I think it makes things more interesting. I just, I've never done business at a BS. I just, that's, it's, this is first, so. It would be one thing if we had throngs of adoring fans, but yeah. since yeah. since the public is absent, it would be nice. All right. So, yeah. so can you all help us with that next round? Yeah, the other thing we have to work out is the sound because when you talk into the microphone, that's where we record the meeting. Well, she runs with me all the time about not talking about it. Right. So if we don't, if we're not capable of doing that down here, yeah. then um, I might have to tell you we can't do it. Okay. For that that's, that's fine. That's yeah. Fine. But sometimes. We're pretty good at following her. Yeah, you know, sometimes uh, I'm not saying the meeting isn't significant, but when you have a regular meeting, that's important. When you're having a work session like we did that Saturday, you know, not every word has to be you know, caught. So well, that was in response to her question about what we're doing next weekend. Right? Next month. Or next month. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, but we can look to them. Can, can, can we turn it into, into a work session? So it would be a work session. It's a special called meeting because it is not a regular meeting that well, is let's on do it. your yeah, calendar. I'm excited about that. Are you good with that? I mean, let's sit down and actually get something done. What's the topic? So uh, 15 minutes on the bylaws and everybody needs yeah. to bring. Mr. Chairman, I, excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt you, but in January, did the EDA set a calendar yeah. for the year? Yeah. Okay. So you go, um, my that trouble? calendar calls for you to have a, a meeting every month. All right. Now, whether you call it a work session or a regular meeting is really immaterial. Okay. You got the date. You got the well, time. Well, except for bylaws also aligned to that calendar, which call regular meetings in the bylaws bi-monthly. Okay. So those are identified. Well, technically, by setting the calendar, you already amended your bylaws. You just didn't. You just didn't do it officially. <laughs> Because you're having a meeting every month, you, you you voted to have a meeting every month, right? But the board of supervisors does the same thing, but has regular scheduled meetings, sure. which are part of their. So we're just trying to figure out whether it's bylaws, whether whether we're having this kind of a meeting or that kind of a meeting. I think the you could just you can. Just, I think it's already been set. Is yeah, what Percy is saying. Yeah, you, you're having a meeting every month. What you want to call it is now up to okay. up to you. So I I would like. I, um, I'd like to get some work done next time with me, and I propose that we have what we're calling a work session. And one of the items on the agenda would be 15 minutes on the bylaw, and everybody bring what you got to say, your contributions. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, Kyle's, Kyle's report, right? So we need to, um, Chris, uh, what is a reasonable date for you to get stuff back to Kyle? If we have comments, we should all read this report and email you comments, questions, clarifications. Uh, the next meeting is June 8th. 
which means the packet goes out on the 1st of June. So if you want to give him a week to look at things, you would need to get your comments to me by the May 20th, Friday, May 20th. Does that work for everybody? So how are the comments being submitted for a piece of understood, but format wise, are we making comments and scribbled in the margins on a document? No, no, no. Is it's that a yeah, it's, 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 no, it's got, it, it needs to be in an email and, you, and to send it to her because she needs to be able to. But obviously, uh, under, understood, out, right? but yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you can call me and I'll, uh, and I'll, I'll do it. Right. Oh, yeah. All right. On the bylaws, can we have a copy of it? Or email it to us? It's in the book. package. It is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, right. we could send you another copy. Well, if it's in my package. Yeah, it's in your package. Okay. So, I, I think we've set the door open to, 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 to just call in first with comments. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. there it is. Yeah. That's even easier. Chris, mm -hmm. okay with that? Mm -hmm. um, I'd recommend that you, uh, that you move out of eight a to a future to a future meeting. It's just a concept to, to, to talk about what you would like to engage other business people in a, in a separate uh, uh, venue. That's a great idea. Uh, I've seen it work successfully. It's a great places. idea. I just thought it would work right for it. Uh, it's less formal than than uh, meeting every month. So, but let's not talk about it tonight. It's a, it's a great idea. You got, you got plenty of time to, to, to work through that. Okay, so so we got two things on the agenda. Is there anything else we wanted to deal with in our in our work session? Or I would we think we want an, an update on the farmers market, as well. but that doesn't have to be a long. Time. Okay. Anything else? Any other great ideas? Well, those are the three things. Um, Let's see. So we've done. Uh, so it's a public comment period. Let's let's make that on the Real quick, what about the additional agenda item I had? Oh golly, I, uh, thank you so much. I, I wrote this down. It, um, uh, yes, please bring it on. All right, thank you. On, on the on the. Um, the, the property yeah so when we when we had our meeting on saturday or that saturday we discussed having um some sort of database of the commercial properties that we can go out and advertise so that you know we're kind of fishing with bait on the end of the hook um to outside investors i did reach out to kyle at rkg and i wanted so actually first off i reached out to a uh, real estate websites that you know would basically provide a site for a hometown realty or something like that. And what came back was that all of these people, these web developers, they all pull from, I think it's the IDX it's called, basically the multiple listing service that's populating their, their website. And since we have so many, call it pocket listings or on um, MLS or LoopNet listings, we'd have to then put them in manually. Um, which none of those sites for like a hometown realty will do. Um, so I reached out to Kyle at RKG. He thought it was a fantastic idea to have all these sites, whether they're for sale by owner on LoopNet or through any marketing avenue. But he also thought that kind of phase two of his thing would be from a marketing standpoint and identity to the King William EDA is for us to have our own separate site that would kind of talk about the great things of the county, what we have to offer from a business standpoint. And then that's also where we would display our properties. Um, now we could do a couple things to get to that point. We could uh, far, use our current web provider with the county. We can do a GoDaddy site, a Wix site, or contract with somebody to build us a very simple site and upload. But he thought it was a fantastic idea because if there's someone from Dallas or San Francisco looking to put a site in the Richmond area, you know, with the right search engine op optimization, we can come up and uh, they'd hopefully pick King William County if, if their business suited our area. 
So I guess what I'm asking is, I think that it would be a good idea for us to have our own separate EDA website um, that we can brand and have our own identity. As for who's going to keep it up, um, I know I talked to Mr. Ashcroft, and it could be a group effort, potentially some interns over the summer can keep it updated if properties sell or properties come on the market. So, Kenny, and that's I, how. I, 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 I thank you for chasing this down. It sounds like you've, you've, you moved the ball for us. Um, I, I think that this is one of those idea, uh, one, one of those um, ideas that we, we could use Jay's matrix on, right? And go through the, the pros and the cons and figure out where it lands relative to everything else. And, um, uh, one way to one way to advance that quickly would be to uh, to to brainstorm yourself on on pros and cons and 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 articulate some you know some of what you just said in a way that that um, you know gets it gets on the board. I, um, I'm trying to think about how how you actually move it forward, right? That would be my, my recommendation. I'm more there are other other thoughts. Uh, I thought with the real estate agents yesterday because I had one that they had like three parcels of land that set the dumpster of the development. That's where they get. So I don't know if that's something that we can help with. You know, it kind of fits into a council. Well, that's why I was bringing it up. And I, you know, the one I was talking about, I had to work on it. You know, they've been telling us about a year, two years now, and they ain't had a fight. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, my, my recommendation to move the needle or move the ball forward would be to, you know, we get some quotes from our current website provider, or I can search some out to see what it would be on a monthly and an annual basis and then the actual build out. And then as far as us getting the listings and uploading it, it would be myself and any other volunteers just working with the local real estate firms and then just calling the numbers, you know, basically on the signs out in the highway. Um, but I, I do think that, you know, this could be an easy win that we can say that we did complete in this year. You know, I, I forget if it was Mr. Ron Edder that said it, but when tractor supply came, you know, Mechanicsville takes the zip codes and phone numbers and everything. So when Tractor Supply knew that they wanted to come to this area, they, they had the data. They were going to come, whether it was on 360 or 30, they knew they were going to come. So they didn't need handouts, incentives, all that stuff. And that's where I think it could be really powerful by us putting out the properties for sale and kind of from a marketing standpoint. I'm, I'm not sure that I see the nexus between the tractor supply having zip codes and identifying they wanted to be here. I guess, I guess in that, in that the property was available maybe. Um, yeah. So I guess what I, what I meant by that was I forget if it was Ray, the manager, but they, whenever you're in a tractor supply, they take your phone number and your information. And they basically saw that a lot of King William was going to Mechanicsville. So they saw the need to be in King William. So they, they didn't come looking for handouts, tax breaks, all the above. They knew that they wanted to be here. It was just a matter of them finding a piece of property and getting it zoned. So if we can find another company, more companies like that, that don't need benefits, they need to come here because of a reason, a business, there's a business reason for them to come. So By us finding these properties, it would make it easier for their decision. Yeah, so um, Kenny, and I'll, I'll be glad to work with you, but I think that the, the, the First step before before we go spending time on on this and potentially money is to just make sure that every you're bringing everybody along with you, right? And so the whole board is behind it as, as opposed to just because if, if we all if we all have our own individual initiatives, we're it just we're not going to cover as much ground as, as quickly. So um, between now and the next meeting, I, I'll be glad to sit with you. Come to my house, and but we you can't come to my house. Um, I don't, I don't know. This is so frustrating. Oh yeah, no, this this I, I just was bringing forward an idea. I wasn't looking for any sort of a motion or anything. Just looking for some feedback from the group, um, just to kind of present on my preliminary findings. 
I think it's a good idea because it's like she was something that would have cried before. I didn't know there was up the state. Yeah. And if we have information that these properties are here in the county for sale for at all disposal, if something did come up, we know it might fit here or it might fit there. And right now we have no, no idea where anything is. I think this it would be a vehicle to address one of the critical weaknesses that we have that the you know our consultant has identified for us. I think I don't know that we have enough information to assess whether or not you know. I mean, of course, there's the cost, there's the maintenance, there's the upkeep, there's all those things that we have to consider before we can say yes, let's have a website. So, I mean, I would I would just recommend that Kenny keep keep looking into it and try to you know build out some more information that we can actually you know consider and take action on. I think that's the way it's, it's going to have to be because we can't work together. And so, so you, you, you will have to chase it, Kenny. And then at, at the, when, whenever we have our meeting where we're going to start drilling into, into these various opportunities, we'll get that on the board and we'll drill into it and look at the, at the pros and cons and, and have at it and rip it apart, you know. And uh, if, it, if, it, if it stands the test, then, you know, we're all behind it. Um, Sounds good. Can, can, can you please try to get a, find an opinion some way that we can actually work together? I don't know how we do this. I mean, if, if we can't like call each other and have discussions, well, and it's just the most frustrating thing. Again, I think Mr. Grant is, is, is saying when we get into that training, that we'll, we'll ask all those questions, and I guess they'll give us direction for us. Okay. Um, I, but I mean, you see the dilemma. I mean, like I'm just, I've, 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 I've told Charlie, I said, call me. I'll work through it right now. I can't do that. And you got Kenny. And you can do that. You just can't have a subcommittee. You can't form a committee or a work group or something like that and then have a meeting. Yeah, you can. You can, you can email. You can yeah, call. you can email. You can call. You can't have a conference call. And the subcommittee call. has to be appointed by the, by the, only by the, by the, yeah, like if, okay. if Ms. Williams and, and Mr. Hodges want to talk about the survey that you're going to put together, that, that's perfectly legit. Yeah. But okay. the only time you came is we made a committee. Yeah. Okay. If you appointed a committee, then we'd have to let the public know that those two are talking about it. So. But as individuals would say. Right. Okay. That's right. Common, well, and common well, sense to follow. Or the state code says no more than two, right? Not for no, subcommittees. Well, two, right? No more than two, though. Uh, no, it won't. You know, form separate. I'm, I'm. So let's know. let's 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 table this. I'm, it, it's, I'm going to be frustrated talking about what we can't do. <laughs> yeah. it's just it's speed of government, you know. So, um, okay. Uh, With due respect to government people, <laughs> they're they're helping. I mean, they're actually like we're. Yeah, then the lawyers were getting anything done. But it's, yeah. Let's see. Um, so let's see. So we got public comment period. Do we have anybody who needs to, who wants to talk? Well, once, twice. Okay. Uh, next meeting is June 8th. Uh, we, uh, do we need to convene a closed meeting? That's on the agenda. It's item number 11. Or you can, you can defer the appointment discussion for another for another meeting if you want. You don't have to talk about it tonight. I think we at least need to address it so that we have one going forward. Just like I told um, Percy tonight, mine ends June. So in actuality, we're, we're going to have another discussion in June because this seat is up again at that point. So if we defer to June, we'll have two to talk about instead of just one. Right now we have one vacant. Is there an urgency around this? No, I think uh, obviously you make a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors and they, they have to ratify it. So as long as the Board of Supervisors makes a decision by the by the uh, by the meeting in June, which is uh, the twenty third, twenty seventh, whatever, um, that would that would put Make everybody ready for July one when it kicks in. Do we need to go here? Need to reappoint him to be chief 
finish in June? Or? Yeah, mine is June 23rd. Okay, so go to I mean, I mean, if you're ready to make that, if you're ready to make that recommendation tonight, you can do it tonight. We'll have to go to yeah. the and do that. And I was, what I was suggesting is that we just push the whole thing. Okay. Okay. Just keep in mind that that means that until so the July meeting, I will not be up. No, if we meet on June eighth, June eighth, the board would have to put the package out. It has to go to Chris, and I have to be sworn back in before I can come back to the meeting. I'm but, just looking at all the logistical pieces. July. Okay. So the July meeting is well, there's a June there's a June meeting of this board. Mm -hmm. of the right. June if they 8th. make a recommendation to the board of supervisors for the last meeting of June and the board approves that recommendation, then you would be eligible for your term again. So we're good. So we're good. There's no problem. Okay. okay. So yeah. the only problem is that we have to work session. So how much business do we want? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, his term doesn't expire until after the work session. So we can do the work. Right. And then it, you just we'll need to make to a recommendation to the board of supervisors for its consideration that it's, that it's June 27th, maybe, or whatever it is. So, well, that does bring up here's my final question. From a work session, can we legally go into closed session? Yes. Okay. And they vote all the time. I know some of them. But I just know some of them personally. So I don't work session I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. I'm surprised Jay didn't. Woo. Oh, are you tired? <laughs>